Hello, hello everyone. Um, thanks for thanks for joining today. I'm going to get started here in uh, just about a minute or two, just to make sure that people, you know, have the, the software packet downloaded and, and are joining on time. So, uh, just a real real quick overview. My name is Dominic. Uh, I've, I've worked a lot on referrals. I'll get I'll get into my background. So these are today. Uh, talking about the 10 referral commandments. Uh, these are just some truths that I've found to be, uh, you know, pretty much self-evident and, and true across all different referral programs I've worked on. So this is very much like a strategic, uh, but it also gets into some of the tactics that you can use to, uh, to juice and improve your referral program. And uh, this is leading up to the uh, conversion Excel class that I'm doing, the live class I'm doing. Uh, uh, specifically on referrals, so it starts uh, April 11th. So uh, we will get started now. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip over and share my screen. One note is that uh, as you have questions, uh, what would be good is not to use the Q and A part, um, but is to actually just drop them into chat, and then I'm gonna reserve some time at the tail end of this so that we can actually go through um, and talk about everything that's in chat. Uh, that, will be, that will be easier because um, uh, everything will be streamlined in there and everybody can see that. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna share my screen right now and uh, flip over into presentation mode. So the 10 referral commandments. Um, Hopefully people get the reference from the notorial, Notorious B.I.G. song, The Ten Crack Commandments. Uh, so uh, I got started with referrals in my very first business and uh, they completely saved my business. And uh, it was like one of those uh, Hail Mary attempts. My, my first business was actually a laundry and dry cleaning delivery service. Uh, and we had completely over-engineered everything. We'd spent way too much time on product and not enough time on growth. And uh, we, we went to the extent of automated conveyor systems and building digital lockers. And what happened was um, not all orders were profitable, right? So we were actually losing money on the majority of our customers. And what we did was we, we strung together very quickly a referral program, basically overnight, where we found out that the profitable customers were all in the condo buildings because they had more money. They had nicer clothes, so they were, they, were, they were wealthier. They would spend more money to get them cleaned. And we would uh, uh, only have to make one stop. So rather than having a general referral program, we had to refer a neighbor program. And um, as a 19-year-old as a losing $30,000 a month, we went for, to making $10,000 a month. Uh, and it was a really, really great feeling because it happened in only about like two months. Um, and that business is still like doing well um, and, and going on. As a result, uh, I really found out that referrals, like I, I felt very passionate about referrals, right? So I, I built a company as a co-founder uh, with my friend Alan, and uh, that company was called Talkable.com. Some of you have probably heard of that. It was backed by Y Combinator, 500 startups, and a lot of other notable Silicon Valley investors. And in doing that, um, was able to work with just so many great marketers at world-class companies, like some of these ones listed here, and essentially build their referral programs. So learned a lot about what worked, but also more importantly, uh, some of the obvious, the, the non-obvious stuff that did not work. So um, let's get into, into some of the lessons. So first of all, I want to make it clear here that the type of virality we're talking about is on this far uh, right quadrant, which is uh, incentivized sharing. So uh, there's implicit virality, which is essentially like what Facebook and Zynga have, because like in order to use the platform, you have to actually invite your friends and, and play with friends. There's organic virality, which is like, you know, cute pictures of kittens that are just so great, you have to share them. And then there's incentivized sharing. And essentially what incentivized sharing is doing is it's a new ad network where publishers are the, the, the friends, right? So you were shifting your budget uh, from, you know, giving it to Google and Facebook, essentially, and you're giving it to your users, um, which works uh, for two great benefits. Um, one, it helps with acquisition, of course. 
which is largely the purpose. But when a friend earns, when, when the advocate earns a reward, the person who originally was, was the referrer, they tend to uh, shop at your brand even more. So for some of the companies, we saw up to 9x increase in value after somebody had successfully referred uh, one friend. So fantastic retention and revenue uh, booster for, for that too, which is kind of unexpected. Now, <clears throat> this incentivized referral is usually, um, just, just to be completely clear, we're gonna get the, our terminology out of the place because out of the way because it's usually very confusing. Refer or refer E, who refer who. Uh, person A is the advocate. The advocate is the person who uh, is already an existing user in your database and you are using referral marketing to get them to share your brand and they are sharing your brand with the friend. So that will be the uh, terminology I use. Advocate is the sharer, friend is the new person. And um, I really believe that referral marketing is really, like, it's very much a holy grail, super organic, a uh, great way to build your business. I think it's also very misunderstood. Uh, People have looked at programs like uh, Dropbox and Airbnb, and they, you know, those are great programs, and they think that they can just kind of like launch a, a referral, a refer a friend program, uh, set it and forget it, and it should do the same thing. And, I, and, and virality can really not just be tacked onto your business. It has to be inherent to your product. And what you're really doing here is you're, you're, you're getting your audience to build your own lookalike audiences for you. So um, I, I like this picture because I hate this picture. Um, I, I, I hate seeing referral programs that are actually called like refer a friend and somebody has like, you know, their hands out and is whispering to somebody else's ear because it just seems very spammy. Uh, essentially, like uh, the way that I believe referral programs should be positioned is as a, as this kind of like exclusive way to um, let your, your, your best advocates bring their friends into the program in a way that they can both be rewarded um, like no other, meaning they should be, there should be a higher reward um, for referrals than any other channel. And uh, like I said, just really quick, the reasons I like this so much, it's an organic way to acquire lookalike audiences. Usually, um, because it's so organic, it has the cheapest cost to acquire customers, and it also, it leverages all the other activities by increasing the LTV. So if you are acquiring customers on Facebook and then they end up referring, it's important to build that into your growth model uh, to, uh, for your calculations because their lifetime value goes up the more customers they refer. And as a result, there's a very unique thing here that happens too is sometimes customers who are your biggest advocates might not be your best customer, meaning by standard calculations, they very well might not be have the spending power, you know, to, to be in your top tier, your, your whale category, um, but they will refer a lot of people. So um, the value of them uh, is just as high, and that's why it's important to, uh, to actually uh, to include that in your, in your calculations. There is, of course, a higher activation rate or conversion rate, uh, whatever you call it, uh, usually from this audience because there's the trust factor like they don't need as many touch points in order to convert so um, Before going through the Ten Commandments um, I Think that it's very important to ask yourself um, before taking these Ten Commandments um, as a prescription and going and doing them immediately uh, You always have to ask yourself with every with all your marketing mixed stuff uh, are referrals for me or is this channel this strategy for me and if it's not for you right now, that's fine. You might come back to it. Uh, but um, first of all, do you have product market fit? Uh, the easiest way to do that is to uh, test your NPS, right? And um, promoter.io is a really easy way to do that. There's lots of free tools to do that. You can also just use Google Forms. Uh, but if your net promoter score is, you know, not, not high, I mean, like, if, as, as long as it's above, like, say, like 50, uh, I think that referrals can work for your business. Uh, now, of course, they could probably work if it's lower than that, but you have to just have like a huge incentive. Uh, the other thing um, that's a really great test I, I love is the Sean Ellis product market fit test. And this link is in here. I will, we'll get this all out to people. But basically, you're asking people, you know, how disappointed would you be if my business did not exist tomorrow? And 
uh, is if you if you get about 40% of people who are saying, I would be super disappointed, that means you have like very strong product market fit. So of course, do you have a big enough audience? Because referrals is at the very bottom of the funnel, right? Uh, with the exception of some like kind of like sharing tactics that we'll talk about. But for the most part, you have to have an audience in order for referrals to work. So uh, if you do not have at least 2,000 people um, who are probably who have transacted with you, not just necessarily a list, referrals probably won't be valuable for you. 2,000 is actually kind of on the low end, um, but I've seen programs work uh, while at Talkable. Uh, for example, one company, Diamond Candles, came to us right when they had just about that. Um, and referrals were actually represented at, at one point in 90 percent of their sales and they just grew like uh exponentially very 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 fast uh and then the last thing is do you have bandwidth um this is not a set it and forget it channel uh i don't really believe that there are as a marketer i don't really believe that there are any set it and forget it channels uh but this should be uh this should be looked at um knowing that you're going to have to dedicate time to optimization uh because uh, there are referrals have actually two funnels and we'll talk about that, but it, it, they, they can be very complicated programs. Uh, and then last, lastly, just touching on the product market fit thing again too, uh, referrals are hard for brands who don't have a brand or who don't have, um, who don't own their value chain. So for example, Bonobos had a very good experience with referrals because they had a, a strong brand and they own their value chain. Like they're the only ones who make the crazy color for cool pants which unfortunately they don't make those crazy color pants anymore, which disappoints me. Um, but they are, you know, like if you are a, um, <laughs> it's hopefully not to be offensive, but if you are uh, an electronics retailer that has no brand, it's just an outlet, um, you are going to have to work um, even harder to uh, get referrals to work for you because what you're selling essentially is, you know, a, a price-based, uh, commodity and it's it's going to be hard to have the margin in there because you might not have the loyalty um, and that's not said to like you know point out anybody uh, or discourage anybody um, I just want people to not uh, necessarily ch chase something that might not work for them if that is characteristic of their business and I'm happy to like talk through those types of problems and, and with people after this so uh, I have this um, very quick uh, smoke test process for testing referrals without really building any technology, just using things like Gmail, JotForm, um, Google Spreadsheets. And it's a way to essentially just test uh, if a referral program works for you. Um, I will not go into detail on that because that would take probably an hour in itself to just explain because it takes about an hour to build it. Um, I will ask the Conversion XL people to look, put a link to my blog on um, Startup Grind out that has the very specific step-by-step -step instructions. And there's a video to accompany it. So let's, uh, let's think about expectations. What are you gonna get from this channel? So I believe that if 10 to 15% of all your sales are coming from referrals as a channel, um, that's fantastic. That is a healthy program. I did mention that uh, some companies I've seen up to 90%. Uh, don't set your expectations there, uh, unless you're a very, very small company and you're not doing any other marketing uh, stuff. So, uh, realize that initially you are probably not going to have that type of performance uh but it you should be able to double your performance within three to six months uh, i have continually done that with pretty much every single referral program i built sometimes more than that so don't get discouraged remember it's just like every other channel um the highest i've ever seen uh that is this is incorrect it is not 60 percent. it is 90 percent. but that was only for two months but over the average of their first year it was 60 percent of sales um, but eventually that gets eaten by paid advertising. Um, and unfortunately this slide is cut off at the bottom here, but what it says is that, uh, word of mouth in general will always have some kind of untrackable component, right? I mean, like this all annoys us as marketers with the direct, uh, the direct traffic in Google analytics, uh, referrals will hopefully, if you promote your program, right, um, make more of that trackable. Um, but realize that there's going to always be some intangible stuff that, uh, you, you, you can't really attribute. So let's go deep. All right. Um, the referral journey is starting with the advocate who is red, um, on the, on the left of the screen. And, uh, what we're, we're looking at here is there's different places or I call them insertion points to get the person to, um, 
invite her friends. So uh, there's conversion and there uh, is the you know a transaction email, um, different places. But essentially, if you look over here, like this just becomes a life cycle. You, you inject this uh, referral call to action in the life cycle. And then there's, you know, there's social share uh, that could also include email, of course. So the friend comes through, they click. Now the friend here is um, now in lifecycle marketing too. You have a remarketing pixel on them. Um, hopefully there is some sort of a, a micro conversion because remember that, you know, 98% of traffic usually doesn't convert on the first touch. Uh, and the friend then, um, if you give them the a unique entry, you can get them into your nurture program too. Um, and so essentially you're looking at first, first touch attribution here uh, for the referral channel. Conversion over time should be really high if you have a good nurture program too. So just remember that referral programs are on their own fantastic, but you need to treat and nurture these customers similar to how you would do on other channels. So um, referrals are, as a result, referrals are about audience. Right, you are building an audience here, a new audience, a highly engaged audience. It's not just that um, uh, first first touch conversions. So two parts of this funnel, right? There's the top part, who are the advocates. These are the people who share the funnel, who see who see the offer, who uh, share the offer, and then there's the people who click through and the people who actually buy. And remember again, like this note down here is that micro conversions really matter. I'm gonna show you a specific example like that for the friends uh, for Tom's Shoes. Okay, cool. So um, number one, always ask for referrals. Uh, your program will not be successful if you do not ask for referrals. And uh, this is a picture of a real estate uh, office, um, which I think is funny because they, real estate agents are the best at asking for referrals and so are uh, insurance agents and all that. Um, you know, very archaic industry, um, not, nothing to do with the programs we're building, but it's just like the mindset is right. It is okay to ask for referrals at the right time in the customer journey, and it should be prominent in all parts of your site, not just some little link in the footer at the very bottom that says, you know, refer friends. Um, so getting shares, there are four steps to this. Um, first, you have to build an attractive offer. Then you have to uh, pick the placements where it's going to be. These are these insertion points that I mentioned. And you have to optimize the share channels that people are sharing on because not all shares are created equally. Uh, and then of course, reward for the good behavior. So one, building your offer. Uh, Single-sided deals rarely work. So uh, what I mean by that is uh, if, if a brand offers me money, but they're not letting me give my friends something, that is rewarding for uh, very much like affiliate type behavior. We are not talking about building an affiliate program here. Uh, that's a totally different topic. The referral programs we're talking about are um, one to one, one to two, one to three, very natural, organic, um, peer to peer programs. So double sided deals um, are a must. Now, the double sided deals do not necessarily have to represent the exact same dollar amount but they should equal the same amount of value, okay? So um, the value to a new user is much different than a value to an existing user, right? So account credit is fantastic for the advocate, for the existing user, because now they have this uh, whole, there is this, this you know, burning money in their digital wallet that they wanna come spend at your store. Whereas that credit, might not be as valuable to a new user because they've never actually worked with your brand. So maybe you want to give a percentage off. Maybe you want to give a free trial. Maybe you want to um, give them a free extra product specifically for them. And so how, the actual offer you, you create is going to have to be tested uh, a lot because the, the difference between a bad offer and a good offer can make your program. Now, we also want to reward for the types of customers you want. For example, uh, if you, uh, I, I had one major blunder in uh, my referral career, and that was when I worked with um, a company under uh, called Piperline, and they wanted to give uh, $25 off um, anything. And I was not insistent enough in saying you have to have a lower limit. You can't just give $25 to people. Uh, it has to be 25 off of 50 or 25 off of 70. 
and the referral program um, within two hours was just massively ridden with fraud. Um, I felt terrible. Um, and that was the best lesson I learned because um, it made me realize that the offer you're giving out should be specifically for the type of customer that you want to get. Now, an offer is a lever, meaning you can, you can build your offer uh, uh, if you want more cash, like if you want more sales, or if you want more you know, lifetime value, higher paying customers, then you can make the offer like, you know, have a, have a, have a higher um, order minimum, right? And we used to do that type of stuff a lot, depending on companies' goals for the month. Now, uh, the tiered rewards are a great way to get people specifically into a program and keep them going. So that would be like, get X for sharing, get Y for every friend that you invite. If you invite three friends and you're going to get a free sweater, and if you're in the top uh, three referrers for the month, we're going to fly you to Paris. Um, maybe not Paris. Um, but uh, something very cool, like, you know, because then you create competition and it allows you to talk about your referral programs. Uh, so when we would run campaigns like that, which we'll talk about in a second, more campaigning, uh, we would see that the referral program was very popular and it would usually eat other channels, um, which is good because it was cheaper uh, to acquire customers uh, in this channel. So uh, having time in incentives is, is very, very important too. There has to be urgency. I mean, that's probably just marketing one on one, but uh, sometimes that gets sometimes people forget that too. So uh, I've talked a lot about offers. Lots of brands are saying, "But we don't like the discount. Discounting is bad." Um, I I agree sometimes with that. Like once you get on the discount train, it's it's very hard to get off of it. They're kind of like crack. Um, not that I know what that's like, but I can imagine like you know like this is this is lots of brands have this problem with discounts. My argument to this is. If you are going to do this, if you're, if you're apprehensive about discounts, then uh, referrals should be the only channel that you do give discounts on because that means that it encourages people to share because it's the only way that they can give their friends a discount. So it seems extremely exclusive and valuable to invite their friends. Um, that also pairs with having the right offer. If the discount you're giving is 30% off and everywhere on your website is 30% off, uh, nobody's going to share that offer. It, the offer has to be better um, for the, the referral offer has to be better. Uh, the other thing is like think about ways that you can incentivize and reward people that have nothing to do with money off. Uh, this could be product, you know, give away a free product, give away some sort of uh, special status in your, in your, in your platform. I mean, um, next door is a fantastic example of that. They, there's no money there. Um, but they, they reward you by feeling good for making your neighborhood a better place, right? So referrals can work without discounts. Um, it is just harder and it requires more creativity. So when doing that, um, my friend Adeline Zhu, who actually built, speaking of next door, built the uh, referral program, um, did this presentation with me. So this is, is one of her slides. And I love that, you know, it's just about understanding the invite motiv motivation, right? Um, are they going to get like a new feature? Like, right, like Snapchat does that a lot. There's no cash involved. They give you extra stickers and stuff like that. Um, does it improve their own experience? Uh, there could be a reward. It could be altruistic, similar to next door. Uh, and uh, just really think like everything else in, in marketing, what is the motivation? What is in it for me, me being the customer, right? Um, keep it fresh. Oh, I can't believe that he, this is actually, uh, this was, uh, put in my presentation um, for when his first uh, thing went through, and now it's actually become a reality. Um, but um, run campaigns, right? Like uh, referral programs need somebody who is always politicking and campaigning and trying to keep the program fresh. Because if it's just the same offer all the time, um, people get bored and they're not going to interact with it enough. Um, so the Bonobos tiered reward example, which is is one, would be like get $25 for each friend you refer. Now that was their static evergreen offer. And so that stayed consistent over time. So we didn't confuse anybody. Then we'd say, get a free pair of pants, which is worth $88 if you refer three friends. And the top three advocates gets a free suit. And we would have a leaderboard and there'd be lots of competition uh, and it lasts only three weeks. So uh, here's an example for Pura Vida, what that actually looks like in the wild. And, um, you know, you can see the leaderboard over here on the right. Um, and this, they, 
they added in um, it, even another one, which I think is kind of like, you can over confuse people too with these types of campaigns. Uh, they have a very uh, engaged audience though, so it, it works well for them. Uh, so moving on to part two of step one. Um, I might have to pick up the timing here. Let me just look at what time it is. Yeah, I'm gonna move faster, okay. Um, so um, where you get people to ask share. So there's post checkout, very authentic, fantastic place. Problem is it's at the very bottom of the funnel, so there are few, fewer people there. So the number of people you get is not very impactful. That's why I like to have a public share page. It's very versatile. You can send people there from emails, from banners on your site, et cetera. Um, having a dashboard specifically for people to track how many people they've referred, how many rewards they've made, easily re-invite friends is very important. I was shocked at how many people would interact with all of our dashboards. Also, it helps with customer service. Uh, On-site promotions, these are banners, bars, uh, heroes that uh, will drive people to the public share page. Uh, and emails, of course, it should be dedicated broadcast emails specifically for referrals, uh, triggers, uh, and uh, tra in, the, in the footer of uh, transactional emails. So um, moving it up, getting it in, in front of people. Um, here's an example from next door, 400% increase um, just by moving it up. Uh, you know, that's, that's a uh, kind of an obvious one, but most people, like I said, bottom footer doesn't work post checkout. Um, immediately having an overlay um, when people check out, uh, this is, this is super effective. Having it in line usually has, I think it was 10 times less people interacting with it, uh, which is significant. Uh, now, if you are giving people, for example, something on the confirmation page that this gets in the way of, that might not be a good experience. So just think about the user journey too. Uh, standalone campaign. This is the public share page um, that just lives on something like um, purebeauty.com slash share. Um, this is where anybody can enter and based on whether or not they are a customer yet or maybe even they're not a customer You can present different offers because they're entering their email first. So it's a great email collector, too, right? And then it gives them the ability to share uh, on the next screen dedicated emails I love dedicated emails that allow you to natively send the email to a friend uh, without actually ever leaving your inbox because you have all your contacts there. So here's a great example from um, Try the World. Um, and I did not build this one, it's just a good example. Uh, you get this email, it tells you how it works, it just tells you to forward this, and the email is really meant for your friend, right? So your friend has complete transparency. So it makes it very easy to uh, invite friends. So transactional emails, um, just the, you know, somewhere in the email um, for the order, why not? include that call to action uh, on site or in your app. So Uber does a good job of just um, popping up uh, referral screens uh, to get you to share with your friends. They've also gotten really good at now suggesting friends who aren't using Uber, uh, which is like <laughs> nobody. Uh, so there's nobody left to invite anymore. Uh, Adore Me, this is a program that I, I thought was, was good. Uh, we would do these, um, these pop-ups uh, for existing customers when they came to the site, not you know, not new customers because then we would just want to get their email address, but for existing users. Um, and here's an example of the Tom's dashboard, I think is really good. Uh, it shows you everybody who you've invited, how much rewards you've earned, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the Wealthfront um, does another really good job of uh, the in showing the invite statuses. Now, not all shares are created equal. So me sharing on Twitter um, versus me sharing on Facebook uh, is going to have dramatic difference. And I can't tell any business specifically what channel is the best for them. It all depends and you have to have visibility into these analytics, right? So the, the top channel um, for conversion, though, is usually something that's direct. So email or SMS. The problem is that the audience you get is not as big. Now, so for awareness, Facebook works really well. I can say that, unfortunately, I've had almost no success with Twitter as a channel, referral channel whatsoever. Uh, and uh, that's just, that, that's unfortunate because I've always wanted to, to have it work, but it's just, it, it hasn't. Um, and usually more choices are a bad thing. So like giving people 20, 20 uh, choices to share uh, is just gonna distract them, they're not gonna know what to do. So you actually wanna guide the user. 
So you want, you want to pick the channel that for them, right? This graph here on the top, we see um, the amount of shares. So what we see here is that there's lots of email shares, there's lots of um, uh, other, other shares, and there's, there's, equal, there's more Facebook shares than there are other, other being copying a link. And we don't know where they paste it necessarily unless we look at the um, you know, referring domain source and analytics. But um, what we see down here is that the sales is not in proportion. The other channel has, uh, the link has way more sales than, uh, than Facebook. But look how many people are sharing on Facebook. That means that we have wasted shares and we don't want that, right? So what do we do? We, we're, gonna, we're gonna deprioritize uh, Facebook as a sharing channel, right? So we, we start out by making just a hypothesis on what we think our audience is on. And we're gonna pick the top two or three, we're gonna measure, uh, and then we're gonna drive more people to share on that channel specifically. And um, then after they share on one channel, we can get them to share on another. So here's an example we knew um, that email um, was working, so we, we would get people to invite their friends via email. It was way more prominent. Uh, Facebook didn't really uh, stick out as much. And um, the, so, hold on. So Facebook did not really uh, stick out as much, uh, and that was, we were able to, to drive more people to share via email uh, and by link. So uh, the other thing is, if you're able to do it, um, help them know who they should invite. This requires a little bit of like third-party data or um, leveraging your existing data better. Um, really, really cool company that, that works on this specifically is YesGraph. So uh, if you can afford to use a tool for this type of contact selection, it allows you to do intelligent ordering. Um, part two, uh, conversion. Okay, so now we're into the second funnel, right? So um, we're getting friends to click, and uh, we are trying to make a very good first impression. We're trying to get the, the micro conversion, um, and then nurture, convert, um, and then um, add them to the top of the funnel, of the first funnel, which is uh, getting them to share again. So it's all very, it all loops together really well. So getting clicks, um, one second. Um, getting clicks essentially is the, is the measure of your interest graph. How interested are people in the offer, in the brand, in the product? So uh, usually I find these to be true. You should write the copy in the voice of the customer. You should allow the advocates to actually change their copy and text. So like in an email, and then you can just always inject the link. Um, mention the discounts. Uh, in the share copy because that will improve the number of clicks. I always like to use um, text-based emails. Um, this is plain text, it doesn't have to be plain text, just text-based. So if I'm sharing with a friend, uh, why would I have some big banner and image uh, mentioning the brand that was just, that's just not holistic. It should look like it's actually an email that's coming from a friend. Also that will help you avoid the promotions box. Um, images, and of course, images on, or on Facebook are what really matter. So like focus on optimizing those first. Um, sharing, uh, share channels. These are the ones that I think are great to include. Um, always include copy a link because people like to share in different places and they need that flexibility. It should always be click to copy. Um, I'm gonna move through this. Uh, here's a very interesting dynamic. You can let people manually enter their email. You can also add um, something like uh, Cloud Sponge, which enables people to access their address book. Surprisingly, a lot of people uh, do not go through that process. Uh, so it didn't necessarily have like huge upticks in, in when we added it. And it can also actually lead to uh, your domain being hit. So you kind of want to limit the number of emails that one person can send to about 25 or 50 because if somebody is just uploading like 2,000 contacts and blasting it out, it's not very targeted. Some people are gonna market it as spam. It's gonna end up hurting your domain in the long run. Also, uh, it's important to have that limit fraud-wise because people will come to your system and they will send out like emails to Market Viagra through your system um, in bulk in millions of emails if you don't do this. Uh, we learned that the hard way. Um, so put a limit, an upper limit on that. Um, allowing customization, I just talked about that. We can change the subject. Um, we can ask them to offer a little note. We let them know that the offer link is going to be inserted automatically. And we have this box checked by default to send a reminder. Now, that seems a little aggressive, 
but the majority of sales came from reminder emails. Uh, even when working with bigger companies like Shutterfly, they would schedule like two, two to three reminder emails, um, and we would see a lot of sales from that. So uh, give it a try, uh, and if you get complaints, maybe take it away, but I don't think you will. Um, and um, the, this is just another example of um, you know, actually having the Google Connect that Dropbox did. Um, then uh, don't be afraid of uh, reminders. I just mentioned this. So like the, the reminders are actually you know, fantastic. Um, and this is, this is what I just mentioned, the spam thing. Um, so I already said it. I'm not going to go over it. But just make sure that when you have your open-ended email field that you do put a, a limit um, on the number of messages that can be sent out. Other sharing channels, uh, these sharing channels uh, mimic acquisition channels, like they're changing all the time. So just really pay attention to where your audience is at. Facebook Messenger has become extremely popular recently. Uh, so I love programs that use and leverage Facebook Messenger. So um, don't forget the power of the link. Um, copying and letting people paste it anywhere is fantastic. Now let's talk about the friend landing experience. This is really, really important because um, we want to make sure it's uh, the best impression possible. So we want to reinforce the offer. We want to customize it so that they know that their friend invited them, so they're there and make it very relevant. I hate it when I click on a referral link and it says like get 40% off or something like that. I just land on the home page and it doesn't mention anything about the discount and I don't know if I'm gonna get it and I bounce, right? So immediately when the friend comes, I like to do some sort of like an interstitial um, where it says like, hey, your friend invited you, you get 50% off, uh, enter your email to claim it. And that's the micro conversion, right? Because if people are really interested enough, uh, they will enter their email. And if you look at sales from the referral channel over 30 days, uh, you are going to see that a lion's share of those are people who did not buy that first time, but that came in, entered their email, and then came back and bought. Um, here's one that we did for Tom's very similar like your friend just invited you to share the world and Airbnb takes us up a notch and they actually put a picture of the person who invited you um, highly recommend this Airbnb has put a lot of time and energy into their referral program they write great materials about it they share how they do it um, really really good resource there um, again there this is like a personalized personalized landing page um, that does that Branch Metrics is a cool free tool that allows you to do that. Um, so if you're mobile, check that check that out. So fraud is unfortunately um, very highly correlated with the referral channel. And uh, referrals get a bad name because people are worried about fraud, and they should be. But it should not let you, uh, you should not let fraud um, scare you so much that you don't actually do the referral program. Okay, just realize that cheaters are everywhere. The ways that they try to fraud you are self-referrals where they try to refer themselves, uh, cross-referrals where person A invites person B, then person B invites person A. And so these are like referral networks, right? Uh, the best way to do this is just to delay the reward until the order is cleared. Like do not give the reward immediately until it's shipped um, and perhaps even past the return period if you notice that there's like a big return problem. And just monitor coupon abuse too. Like I always like to use single use coupons. I like to make sure that these coupons are not being posted on coupon cabin, stuff like that. Um, but the best way to fight fraud is uh, specifically just building the right offer that it does not incentivize people to defraud you. So um, you can also block the same email address uh, from, from being a referral, uh, block the Mac address. So that's your specific browser address. I don't like to, block IP addresses. Uh, I do always record the IP address, uh, but blocking the IP address is very, uh, is very is bad because uh, I could refer my friend who I'm sitting next to at work and that should go through, you know? Um, allow, allowing only a certain volume of referrals per person is another way to do it, but I would not do that um, unless uh, you see that there is a, is a big problem. And like typically what you'll find is like, for example, my friend told me that he had $50,000 in Airbnb credits because he just popped his Airbnb thing into Google AdWords um, and earned a whole lot that way. Some brands you know, don't care about that. They'd say, hey, that's fantastic that people are doing that. Um, other brands uh, would not like that, but if it becomes a problem, the way to solve it is to eliminate how many people 
put a limit on how many people can invite a friend. Um, tracking duplicate accounts, this is where it gets very tricky because people can just come and create different accounts in order to gain your referral program. And there are some pretty cool device fingerprinting tools like Count, um, very expensive unfortunately. So if you have it, it, an easy way to do this, uh, is just making sure that the billing um, or the shipping address, if you're shipping a physical product, is not the same um, anytime there's a referral reward. And nine, yeah, that will catch 99% of self-referrals um, that are doing the double account stuff. Um, another commandment, do not have bad customer service. Uh, I know that sounds obvious, but it's so, 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 so important because the worst thing you can do is take an advocate for your brand get them into your referral program and then turn them into a detractor because everything wasn't organized. So you should make sure your customer service agents are armed with the tools that they need. They need to be able to see who referred who, what's the status of the reward, and also hopefully be able to do some sort of technical troubleshooting. And it's just responding fast. You know, even if the answer is we don't know the answer to that yet, but we will, we are looking into it um, and we'll get back to you. Um, fast response is, is just, is just always the uh, avoids having a, uh, middle finger emojis tweeted to you publicly. Um, <laughs> that, that happens. Um, don't understaff engineers. So if you're gonna build this stuff yourself, um, please, please realize that it is not just building it. Once you build it, it has to be maintained. And it most likely is going to have, to have somebody who is part-time or, or full-time dedicated on, on this program. You have to look at complicated stuff like offer expiration for different offers, having different offers, doing is, is the customer qualified like with this fraud stuff, um, doing cross browser testing, setting up all your DKIM records and sender records, um, doing inside and outside IP detection. So it's like I said, it, it's a build it yourself. Um, I fully advocate anybody who who's engineering where engineering is a core comp competency of your business to actually build your own referral program. Um, I think that's great. Um, but uh, if you are, if you don't have that, um, there's nothing the matter with using a third party vendor who has already figured all this stuff out. Um, kind of like bringing all this together, um, you also wanna build a growth model so you can figure out, you can make a prediction as to what your, um, you know, your, your virality rate is. And um, I have a template for doing that uh, that, we're, that we discuss in the course. It's, is more complex than this because you want to take into account all the different sharing channels. Um, once you have the template, it's a very easy thing to, to build. Um, all right. Um, I did, okay, great on time. Um, 10 referral commandments. Really, really quick here. Thou shalt always have good program moniker, um, meaning like, you know, call it, get, have it be an exciting, um, uh, thing that's not just refer a friend with like somebody saying refer a friend. Um, thou shalt always uh, reward equal benefit to both parties. Now that, that just means the value has to be the same. Thou shalt never let an uh, offer go idle because people will not be engaged. So remember to do campaigning. Um, thou shalt always test to find the best sharing channel because not all shares are created equally. Thou shalt use email as a way to promote referral programs because email is one of the best um, conversion channels. Uh, thou shalt use plain text emails for peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Um, again, no need to have these big HTML rich markety snazzy emails. Uh, Text-based emails work much better. Uh, thou shalt make the friend's landing experience unique and mentor the offer so that the friend knows what the hell they're getting um, and why they're getting it. Uh, thou shalt remember to include micro conversions because most people do not convert on the very first touch. Thou shalt keep the advocate in the loop of the referral process, uh, progress, meaning give them a dashboard, let them know that they can reinvite friends, how much rewards they're making. This is like training a dog. Um, and once a dog knows that when they see a snack, they sit, like similar to a customer, uh, they will continue to refer and refer. Um, thou shalt fight fraud relentlessly, <clears throat> but not let it scare you from running your offers. Um, just make sure that it's not a problem, and if it is a problem, you can solve it. And uh, tooling up. Okay, people like to talk about tools. I think this is the last slide. Um, in order of expense, um, Talkable is at the, the high end. They do actually have a new pro tier, like a, like a, like a self-managed tier, um, which is actually very affordable um, and is awesome. I'm glad they did that. Um, mobile, YesGraph. Um, 
very cool company. Um, Ivan is a very cool dude. Um, he knows a lot about referrals. He was involved in building the Dropbox referral program. Branch, fantastic company. It's free for the most part. Um, Extol, uh, a lot of people were using them in the beginning. I'm not really sure what they're doing now. Um, but I would say that friend buy, if you're, if you're looking for just like a very cheap, um, like referral widget friend buy is like a thousand dollars a month. Um, uh, I've never used a friend buy program myself personally. Um, but I know that we've convert, we used to convert a lot of people over, by the way, I'm no longer at talkable. So I'm not like a sales rep or anything like that. Um, the, uh, ambassador is a cool program. I think they do it on a rev share model. Now it's a little bit more developer friendly. Um, referral candy is, Oh, referral candy is a great cheap widget, um, to use. Um, I think they're still cheap. Um, and you can also just Google free referral software. There's new players that are coming in all the time and unfortunately dying too. That's the problem. Um, so, uh, building it yourself is also like, you know, an option and there's, there's some good uh, resources that I talk about in, my, in, the, in the program, like what Harry's did, they have a, an open source library, um, but then you just, you're gonna have to maintain it and it is gonna require somebody to, to, to build that in. Um, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to uh, exit full screen and come back here, um, share my face, which doesn't look so great right now, um, and look through some of these questions. Okay, cool. Um, so from Kathy Grace, laugh out loud, we're using money on transactions, but we're making it up in volume. Oh yeah. 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 I think that was about the laundry, um, uh, and dry cleaning uh, business. That was kind of what it felt like. So just remember not all orders are created equally. And this goes back to uh, tying in with referral, um, optimizing for the right type of customer, right? So when you, when the offer is for um, $50 off of $200 rather than $25 off of $75, the first one's gonna get a lot better customers because they're willing to spend $200, right? So they're probably gonna have better money over time and, 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 and become more profitable customers. Okay, so Jeff Nolan, um, can a referral program sell an experience? Yes. Let me try and think of a good example of that. Uh, I don't, I can't think of an example off the top of my head uh, right now, but most definitely I think a referral program could, you can use referrals for anything that's exciting um, and anything that's unique. Like the more unique and the more better, uh, the better off it is, right? Uh, Kitchen had, uh, had a good referral program and their experience was having um, chefs come into your house and do a cooking night for you, right? Um, and th that could be the reward as well. Like, like that's fantastic. Um, to have that type of experience as a reward because it really motivates people more than just money. Um, from Baron C, um, I know you haven't touched on this yet, but I want to put it out there. For pure online biz, how do you avoid cheating bad behavior that happens in many systems? Okay, so I just, um, I, I just covered that in the very end, but largely speaking, just to, to remember, it's about how you construct the offer. Uh, that is the best way to fight fraud and bad behavior. Uh, so make it an offer that's attractive to the right type of customers and don't reward people until you know that the new offers are good. Um, on the flip side to that, don't let the, if, even if like some people are cheating the system, I've worked with brands before where they were like, Oh my God, people are cheating the system. Uh, but it was only like 1% of people, you know? And so it's like, you're going to have to deal with that sometimes, but 99% of this stuff was great. So it's like, you have to take a little bit of uh, bad with the good. Um, so what are some of the incentives that you've seen work best? Okay. Well, what, what works for me, um, from like a, an incentive standpoint does not necessarily work for you. Why? Because the audience is probably very different and we have to think about what is the user motivation and you always match the user motivation to, you always match the incentive to the user motivation. Now, I will tell you that the structure for incentives that works really well is doing those campaigning things where it's like get X for sharing, get Y for one referral. If you get, get to three referrals, you get Z. And if you're in the top three, you get an experience or something like that. So that structure works really well. What X, Y, and Z are there, um, I would be making it up um, and just um, in an effort to, to sound cool. Uh, but I don't know specifically what will work for your, your business because I don't know what your business is. Um, uh, 
Regarding, okay, from Kenan, uh, cool name. Regarding rewarding for types of customers you want, can you further elaborate on why we should avoid giving straight up store credits, $25 to customers that a minimum order should be associated with? Okay, so yes, I can. Okay, if I have never been to your store before, um, a store credit might not necessarily be valuable to me because I don't know that I, I'm going to come back or, or use it or, or anything like that. Uh, also, if you just give uh, $25 away to somebody and you have items that are, that are less than $25, somebody can just basically come in and, and take from you. And then you're rewarding somebody to do that too. Um, and especially uh, that type of offer is very prone to fraud because you're incentivizing me as the advocate to click on that link and take something and then get more money from myself that I can then take more stuff. So that's why I'm, I'm always very like cautious of that. Like it put a lot of time and energy into thinking about your offer. Um, can you give some tips to run a referral program to people high in their professional ladder? Example, CEOs, IT managers. Yeah. So, um, this again goes for selecting the right types of incentives that match the user motivation. If I am, you know, a CEO who's making a million dollars a year, uh, I'd be, that'd be awesome. Um, no, uh, if I were a CEO who's making a million dollars a year, I probably wouldn't be motivated by, uh, you know, $25 off a pair of pants, but I might be motivated by a limited edition type of pair of pants, right? Because it's something that nobody else could get. So, uh, testing the offers is again, like the most important thing you have to find the user motivation. Um, would love to hear about enterprise SaaS tips and use cases. So I think you're talking about, um, Uwe, I think you're talking about uh, how do you get referrals for enterprise SaaS, right? Uh, I actually, we, we did something like this and what we found, it was somewhat successful. It's harder to, to do use referrals in a non-transactional business, but it still can potentially work. What we found in e-commerce is that all the young cool kids um, who would not necessarily be our customers were working with the, they had advisors in the bigger brands that uh, you know, would, would be able to pay for our service. So we would go to the younger up and coming brands and we'd say, hey, like, if, you refer, if you refer us, like, we will set up a program for free for you, like if you have advisors. And we actually got quite a few introductions that way. Um, not sure if I should say that on a public webinar. Um, as it, I guess it's all right. Uh, now, if, if X stole or somebody else is watching that. Um, sorry, just checking. Okay, I don't know what that means. Um, from Keen, and again, uh, how would you recommend assessing whether your brand would benefit from allowing a person to mass share an offer? That is your off AdWords example, or whether your brand should cap the amount of shares? Yeah, really great question. Uh, I think that um, the uh, oh, yes, yeah, so how would you do that? This is, this is a topic that I, I never really understood why brands did not want people to go out and uh, like advertise their referral code. And I think it was like largely like channel conflict. Like they felt like um, they should own AdWords uh, and do that. Um, then also, it was kind of more like affiliate behavior and they wanted to stay away from affiliates because like they would rather have them be in their affiliate program, which only gave, you know, 10% of a sale capped at 20, but they're giving a $20, $5 uh, referral program credit to the person. Um, I, I, I personally think it's backward thinking. Um, I like the idea of having people who go out and uh, do that type of thing with my business. Um, so it's really, it's, it's a personal, if you see that it's hurting you on other channels, um, then I, I can see it, but it's just, it's a personal preference. Um, but great question there. Um, from Ed, well thought out suggestions. Thank you, Dominic, lots to steal here. Can I get the slides? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll figure out some way to get the slides out to, out to people or, or post it. Um, also, I mean, this is like, this is really just scratching the surface. Right. So the referral, the live referral course that I'm doing is, is going to go into like nitty gritty details, um, specifically how to build your strategy out, um, how to build the model, 
how to actually build a program using some tools, uh, how to optimize it. So um, I believe we have a we have a code to um, so if you want to register for the course, uh, you can use the code referral fifty, um, and that will give people fifty dollars off. I'll just paste that um, in here uh, for everyone in case anybody wants to sign up. Referral fifty. I think it's just on conversion XL. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a transcript of this. I think there's been a recording now. Okay. If that was for Ed. Um, which referral program, referral channel is the best for starting for a startup company? Yes. Uh, I think referral candy is probably pretty cheap. So I would look at, at doing that. Um, I, I would also compare it to the new talkable program, uh, which I, I believe is like a managed pro thing. I, it's just like, Disclaimer, I, I built the software, but it's like, like I didn't personally build it, but like I was the product guy there and like, it was just the steps, like leaps about, like <laughs> leaps better than everything else. Um, thanks, Dominic. Keyboard is funky today. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, is there a referral bonus for the referral program? <laughs> That's great. Um, I, don't, I don't think we have a referral program for there. The, how funny is that, right? Uh, cobbler shoes. Um, but that's great. I think that's all the questions. This, this worked out perfectly within the time window. Um, thank you guys so much for, for coming. And oh, some people ask questions in the Q&A really quick. Hold on. Um, and for SaaS, okay, we talked about that. What would you recommend for a site focused on publishing offers, a free tool, revenues made of users, books through the site? Hmm. Uh, that is a very good channel. What would you recommend for a site that is focused on publishing and offers a free tool? Well, you have to have some revenue model, right? So uh, there is still a lifetime value for new users. Uh, I would figure out what that is and what your cost to acquire customers are on other channels. And then I would try and maybe use like an Amazon gift card or uh, something like that, you know, that's, that's like $5. Um, if you really want to be cheap, you could always go to restaurant.com and, and buy a bunch of their like $25 certificates for $2, um, stuff like that. We used to run their referral program. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's still some value for your, for users, I'm sure, in some capacity. Um, okay, cool. Um, well, guys, thank you so much for, for jumping in here. Um, we will figure out a way to, um, you know, broadcast this and get this online and let people know about the replay because a lot of people registered and um i my twitter handle is at distro dom i'll put that in here so um you know definitely follow me if you want but i i tell you that so that you can you can tweet quest, uh, uh, questions to me okay awesome cool thank you guys